I have no idea if that's working or not, but I hope it is. Okay, so this is the new video. If you come from the old video, let me know. You good? Hey, looking good? How's the audio? Audio doing good? Thumbs up. We good. Hey. All right. Sorry about that, guys. Something happened. I don't know what it is, but I had to down uh, the internet browser and reboot it. So, all right, so I think we left off with uh, colors. I think we left off with colors. So. so basically, when it comes to colors, there's, there's a million colors out there. And I feel like I feel like there's probably three colors that you really need. And the rest of them are just there to, I don't know, look pretty. So you'll, you'll pay money to, to buy them. And... There are exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, it is true. So, so what I mean by that is, you know, when it comes to lures and baits, you have two colors you have to just base everything off of. There's, I'll just show you. I got all the lures in front of me, so I'll just show you since I'm playing with lures anyways. Uh, right, so these are, these are the two. These are the two we're talking about. This is universally accepted, okay? This could be bass fishing, crappie fishing, white bass fishing, and everything. You always, especially if you try to match bait fish, there's a bone color, which is white, like your whiteboard. And then there's this color, which is chrome. Chrome is... If you can see, this this chrome is completely chrome. And this one was designed for somebody who really wanted chrome. Uh, meaning that guy who wanted the, the, the all chrome and the all bone. This is kind of a, not a great example. He's got a black bag, but all chrome, all bone. That's what all the pros throw. And it is not even arguable. All the pros, just they, they just want that. If there's something really pretty, then more than likely, like I'll give you another example. So this one's real pretty. It's got brown or uh, purple on top. It's actually see-through, but it's got a chartreuse bottom on it. See that? That is a specialized color for a specialized lake. All right? Or a specialized type of fish. Like they'll they, they really like this. That's why they make them. And over time it becomes like a really popular color. So that's what I'm saying when I mean, right? So you go with a go with a bone color, go with a chrome color, and then go with if you want to, uh, the local uh, bait shop. No time. Local bait shop will never hide anything from you, and if they try, just go down the aisle and just look at which uh, which baits are missing. Like you can have an entire aisle, and uh, on the pegs there might be five or six hooks on the or five or six uh, baits on the pegs. But you'll get to one that only have one or none, and that's what's hot. It's that simple, okay? When you look around, you, you figure all those uh, all those little tricks out. So for us, I mean, if you look at all our baits, right? See so that one? That's basically bone, right? That's a swim bait. But basically, you know, it's bone. It's basically a bone color. If you look at this... It basically is a bow. This is old and now it's all yellow, but it's basically a bow.
This one? This little Kai Tech? It says white. Boom. Oh, what is going on with my tackle box, man? It's all messed up. This, look at that. It's basically a chrome bait. Chrome. Keep it that simple. Look at that. <laughs> Just the head. Only the head came back. And then, you know, look at this. See? Chrome. Uh, yeah, we got a lot more. Look at all this. Okay. That. I got some more over here. Yeah. Chrome. Chrome is, I don't know. Okay. Well, the thing about the chrome baits is you typically have to reel them a little bit faster just so uh, the bait, just so the fish don't get a real good look at them. That's kind of a trick, the trick to like, normal things too. But for the guys that are here tonight, like I said, uh, I don't have much topics to talk about. So if you guys are going to let me kind of ramble, we're, we're going to talk, you know, top waters. In winter, we're going to talk top waters. And we're going to talk about why we like top waters and the fish. The little top water project that we're working on. So, so unless you guys have some specific things, ah, yes, rainstorms. Uh, rainstorms are great. Um, yep. Well, you guys, uh, the first three rainstorms of the year, rains the fifth rainstorm, always money, always. Always. Doesn't matter if it's striper, doesn't matter if it's bass, or crappie, whatever, man. Damn it. Sometimes when I cast big baits, I feel like my 10 foot rod and my. on a break. That means you're doing something right. <laughs> if you ever see 47 casts, his, uh, we also we got we actually got some video footage of this. It's on the channel. I think it's cast more than a hundred yards, something like that. Uh, uh, he uh, he cracked on his ten foot six TFO rod in slow mo. That thing looks like he's on the break, and he's on twenty pound uh, twenty pound braid. And I swear, I, I, at moments in time, you, you have to think he's not getting that top water back because. He cracks it so hard, you're thinking it's just gonna break, but it actually doesn't. It actually doesn't. Twenty pounds is pretty strong. Then you know, in a way, you think about it. There's no way, you know, no way a, a bait like this on the end of the rod is gonna break twenty pounds. So, especially if you got a leader on it, the leader stretches a little bit. Top water work if there's no water discharge. Of course it works, man. Who, who told you it won't work? That guy's an idiot. Even in muddy water, yep. Even in muddy water. Even in muddy water. So let me give you guys a little breakdown on the, the, the muddy water situation, right? So if you're fishing a top water in a muddy situation, there's two things that usually uh, can trigger a fish to bite. Um, when you're... Uh, uh, fishing those waters, uh, a lot of times they have a lot of uh, like they have sight problems, right? The fish can't see you very well, so the fish has to either one track your bait or two, you just have to give them enough time to come and get it. So if it's real shallow water, meaning less than two foot, then you can still work at fairly normal speeds. But if it's if it's a like super dingy water, you just gotta walk it in place. All these baits is you can you can walk it in place, or walk it slow, and they'll they'll, they'll come and get it. You know? Do you load most of your top waters? No, we don't. We don't load. We do not load up every single one of our top waters. We don't. We have 
I'll show you. These are these are still pretty much stock. This is stock. This is stock. Uh, that's stock. That's stock. That's loaded. And that the one that broke off, these both of these were loaded. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, do you know? Uh, about, hey man, I'm new to the, I'm new to fishing. I don't I don't know what to do. I'm river fishing from UK. Uh, river fishing. Okay, so that's actually a good question for all, all all new fishing guys, right? So if you're fishing a river, depends on how the river is deep or real shallow. It's better if you go to a shallow river if you can pick. But on the shallow river, I'm talking five foot. Like that's that's fairly shallow, right? Versus something that's fifteen foot. That's a fairly deep river. Uh, but with the shallow rivers, you gotta think of it like this: for all the new guys, and then once you learn this trick, you can take it with you for the rest of your life, right? You want to go find the deep holes. Fish usually are found in deep holes. Every single river situation. Fish are always in the deep holes. It doesn't matter for you know ten foot deep. If it's ten foot and then you go and there's like a fifteen foot hole, there's gonna be a bunch of fish sitting in there. But it's hard for you to find if the river's real deep. If the river's real, river's really shallow, right? So like a great example of this is the Arkansas River that we fish at, and the river is uh, is basically dammed up by this dam. So if this dam is not releasing water, it actually dries up. So in our case, when the water is running, it's actually not as good of fishing as when the water is off. When the water is off, you can imagine this river that's 200 yards wide, and it runs, I don't know, thousands of miles. It's really hard to locate fish, right? But they turn the dam off. All that water goes away. The 200 yards ends up being about... 50 yards, right? And you can, and then it gets real shallow. So it's only a foot deep in most areas. So for you to just and see the deep hole, it's really easy. And you go out there and throw a top water on, or throw your swim bait on, throw a spinner bait on, throw something in, and the fish are, fish are there. You're going to get bit. All right, best way to kick stripers. Uh, I'll answer that with a, another question. <laughs> Best way to cook stripers is depending on the size of the striper. Okay, so this is how long we've been eating stripers, right? So I'll give you like a range, like a range of stripers, right? If the striper is less than 20 inches, the best way to eat them is a soup. Best way. Best way to eat them is a soup. Meat's a little tender. It tastes kind of like crappie. But it's got a lot of meat, so it's real good. So like a soup or a grill, like a, 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 a what do you call it? A foil, you foil, foil wrapped grill, grilled fish is really good. That's probably the best size, best sizes to do it. Once you break that twenty inch mark, the meat gets a little more tough, right? So that's when your uh, your lock comes in. Okay, lock comes in when the when the fish breaks that twenty mark because below that, it's just not enough meat to really do it. You know, because you need a lot of meat. So 20 plus lot is excellent, right? Once you get to the 30 inch, my opinions change again. So once you get to the 30 inch and bigger, I really, I really like steamed striper head. And for all the guys that know what I'm talking about, let me know. You let me some love in the comments. The striper steamed head is prob and tail and collars and belly is probably the most underrated dish out there. It really is underrated because no one talks about it. And the guys that know, they just know. They don't tell them why. Uh, let's see. And once you get bigger than that, I think it's all about those two. La, La is really popular. And you get to striper steaks and grilling. Uh, striper steaks is pretty good too. Ain't gonna lie, it's pretty good too. Uh, 
What do you think about the Storm Wild Eye Swim Shad? Okay, so the Storm, the Storm is one of those where uh, I think you can be hit or miss too, because the the swim bait looks really good, but it actually doesn't swim very good at all speeds. If you really roll fast, it swims really good. But if you really roll slow, it's not it's not the best one out there. And that's kind of the sad part about that one. If we just thought it looks so good, the price point is good, everything's good. If you're fishing a river and you're drifting it, I can see I can see that being a pretty good bait. Because rivers rivers flow real fast and you're just drifting it. So you're just basically holding it against the current. And the tail is doing this lot, which is good. But if you're fishing a lake and you're slowly winding it, not that good. Not that good. Wrinkle dig. I a hook too early on water fish, but do you guys get, but you always get it to the bone. I get too excited when I see it. Yeah, that's a rookie mistake. Uh, take it from us, you know, when we fish for money, fishing bass tournaments, set the hook. You let them set the hook for you. That's the trick to top waters. So, like the reason why is you get so excited when it hits it and you, you feel them tug on it. Because a lot of times they okay, let me let me explain that. Because unless if I tell you like this, you're probably not gonna understand. So you imagine your bait is doing this, right? It's moving around so fast. Most of the time the fish is not there to like eat it. Most of the times I think he's here to like hit it. Like just stops moving so fast. You know what I mean? So the first time he rams it, you set the hook and it's it's gone. Like that fish don't know where it went. But if you if he hits you, like you're working it pretty fast, right? You're like, bam, stop working it so fast. When they hit you, just slow down. So it acts like and you can 99 percent times you'll get a second hit. You always do. Because that's exactly what the fish wants to see. Hit him, he's injured, I'll go back and get him. And when he comes back to, he comes back to, to get it, he's not here to like ram it or he's here to engulf it, you know, to, to bite it. So second hook, hook set, uh you you tend to always get. Alright, so top water bite in March, probably not. Probably not on the white bass and strippers yet. Usually they don't hit top water until the post spawn, which is late March into May. Like May is when the top water bite starts. But it depends, you know. If you go out there and you see them chasing bait, they'll they'll hit it. But like in the early season, uh, May, they they won't hit the fast retrieve. They want a slow, like real slow retrieve. And and they might even want a, a bait. Like, it, the water is so slow that you can't do it with a weighted plug. You have to go back to the regular uh, non-weighted plug, you know. Uh, the one that it doesn't sink or it slow sinks. Slow sink is a good thing, too, because a lot of times it won't hit a top water. But if, it, if your bait is slow sinking where it's only, like, say, two or three inches under the surface, they might get that where they won't come to the surface. So just keep that in mind, too. Yeah, so like I've caught them, we've caught them real early. We, we've we've caught them as early as February when it comes to a top water bite, but it's like you you have to see the signs of a top water bite. You can't go out there and expect him to sling it right because you're like you said you're gonna catch him more on the swim bait. A swim bait will dominate a top water in this month, next month, and possibly the following month. Okay, but if you start seeing them, if you start seeing waking action on the surface. Or if you start seeing them chasing shad, right, that's the time to do it. That's the time to do it. And even at that time, it's probably still not the strongest bait, uh, the best pattern, some people call it. So you still want to throw the swim baits. Swim baits are just good all year. Uh, they're that's good. The fluke is always good. You know, that type of stuff. The A rate's still good. Uh, yeah. Here's the other, here's another. This is why I like talking to everybody because uh, we get all these recommendations, right? So this guy says, 
Uh, chunks boiled in crab and shrimp oil. Very nice. I agree. I agree a lot. But have you guys ever had this, right? Take the... Uh, it's basically crab cakes, but instead of doing crab cakes with real crab meat, uh, it's basically crab cakes, but instead of doing crab cakes with real crab meat, I'm telling you, it's gotta be good. So basically, that's what I'm talking about. You take a take a full size crab, right? You rip the shell off, clean the shell out, and then just stuff it with uh with fish, basically. Uh, fillet your fish out, chop it up, and the, uh, uh, well, I don't know about tomatoes, but every, whatever your favorite ingredients are, right? peppers, black pepper, uh, salt, you know, grind it up, uh, stripers, and then uh, onions, finely, finely diced, uh, green onions, cilantro, finely diced, your favorite seasoning, you know, and put it back in the shell and glue it. Like, I just came up with that recipe, in th like, right now on the spot. But, hey, I need to go do that now. You know, I, I think it's going to be good. So how do the, how come the strippers are biting after the damn shuts off? Do they run off to the deep holes? Yeah, they do. Basically, they do. Uh, so for the guys that are fishing dams, like dams only, I'll give you kind of my theory. It's not like it's 100% true, but it's just what I think happens. Right, so if you're if you're standing at the dam, right, and the generator is not on, there's you gotta imagine there's like a hundred stripers over there, right? All of them are just chilling, hanging out, kind of like what we're doing right now, hanging out, nothing's happening. And all of a sudden, the bell goes on, and they know the water's gonna turn on. They know, we know, the water's gonna turn on. So when the water comes through, they know that it's easy to catch to catch bait. To catch a uh, shad, and in our dams, especially in the wintertime, a lot of shad come through the generators from the lakeside. Like hundreds of thousands of shad actually come through. You just don't see it, but they're there. So it's a good time for those stripers and white bass just to have an easy meal. You know, like they're just sitting and just peck, 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 and they're they're eating good. So we uh we catch bass that you know stripers that time when the generators are on, right? But there's gonna be another moment. I think in the summertime where the generator's on and they won't bite because they've already fed at night or they've already done something like that at night. So there's there's also that. But you got to imagine that when the bell turns on, the stripers go into a feeding mode. And when the generator shuts off, they, they kind of shut off too. Go to the deeper holes. What bobbers do you use on your surf runs? I don't have it here. I actually don't know the brand, to be honest. Uh, we use a foam with a little sinker on the bottom. It's a, it looks like an egg sinker. It's the size of this cup, too. Size of this cup, too. But. Ah, yes. Wrinkle Dink is asking a bunch of good questions for you guys tonight. So everybody who's watching tonight, give Wrinkle a, a thumbs up. If you can't lie, he's going to do that, but... Basically, what is the advantage of changing your treble hooks to a single hook on your topwater baits? Right? Do I have a topwater here? I don't know if I have one. Uh, well, I, did one, I did it one time, but I lost it. Uh, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons why. So I'll give you one. Give you, give you like my personal reason, right? So you have... Mm -hmm. Let's move on the next. All right, so okay, so I hope you guys see this on camera, right? So this is this is this is a really expensive board. This is a this is an Evergreen International Shower Blows. It's like twenty five dollars, right? It comes with really good hooks, real good hooks, like real good Japanese hooks, real good. Hooks. But they're not strong enough. A striper will mess it up. It'll mess it up in no time. So what we end up doing is we change them out. We use the Gabagatu EWG size fours. See that? Gabagatu. That has uh, 
It's a really good, it's really good. Like, we can thrive in a lot of fish with this. It is really good. So a lot of people are asking, like, well, you've already swapped a, a treble hook that you really have confidence in, right? So why would you go to a single hook? The main reason is the treble hooks are very dangerous once, once you land the fish. When you land the fish and you go to grab the fish's mouth or the, the body or anything, and this is in his face and he's thrashing, if you get one of these hooks in your hands while he's still thrashing, it can be it can be very, very dangerous. It can be very, very dangerous. That's that's reason number one. Uh, reason number two is even these hooks are upgraded. If you catch a real, real giant, they can still bend them out. That's not the case with the single hooks. The single hooks, once you get them, the tricky part is once you get them, because you're going from nine points down to two. So keep that in mind. Once you get them, it's done. They're not straightening out that big hook, okay? It's done. Problem is, they because depending on the day, there are some days where they're just slapping the bait. If they're just slapping the bait, going to a sink, an inline, an inline hook, inline hook system is actually a bad idea. You're probably going to miss two of the five where you could have caught them on the treble hooks, right? But, you know, at the same time, if it's one of those days where the bait really good, they, it's just better, you know? Less stuff to deal with. What is your preferred rig? What is your preferred rig for using instead of hard baits? Uh, all the chicken locally, a lot of people do they call it inline sinkers. For us, the inline sinker is actually better because we don't throw the fly unless it's a really, really far range type thing, and then we throw the flies. We could throw them like pretty close to, but they hang up so bad that we try not to. And uh, flies are pretty expensive compared to all the other baits, so we don't throw anything that can get out there. And that's the only thing that'll bite too. Then we throw the flies because the fly, the fly setup. Don't get me wrong, I like it, but I don't like rigging. It takes a long time and. Kind of gets to you, but the fly is when, when it works. The fly is the only thing that is working because even the Keystone and all these other dams, there's gonna be one of those moments where you throw a top water out there, they won't bite it. You throw a, a cast master, they won't bite it. You throw a big fluking jig head, they won't bite it. Uh, the inline sinking with the fly, and then they bite it. So, no, I, even when we even with the water's muddy. muddy I don't know how they get the. I don't know how they see the fly, but they see the fly. Okay, I've heard. I heard some fellow Hmong fishermen at Keystone say the stripers only hit on a cadence, certain cadence in different seasons. Opinions on that? Yeah, that is that is actually a true story. That is actually a true story. But you have to figure it out. So. Cadence. I'll show you the Lord. These are, these are the cadences that I go with for strippers, right? And this is kind of beneficial for everybody that's still watching. Striper, if it's top one, you might even have to pause it. Like walk, walk, walk. Like that's a really slow cadence, right? And then then you have the just slow walk the whole time. Like the slow walk the whole time. And then you have the I'm going crazy. Everywhere. So those are the three. Those are the three. And if, if they're smarter than that, don't waste your time on the top one. Go throw something else. Uh, that's my idea of fishing in these. Uh, if, they, if they're, they're going to make it more complicated than that, then that fish is too smart. <laughs> Forget about them. Either that or you throw like a... I don't know if you guys know what the Oklahoma killer rig was, but... We had a video back on that like seven, eight years ago, where you take you take this a top water, take a top water, tie like a twenty pound mono line on it, and then put like a jig, like a bucktail. Really, really 
I'll talk that too. So I feel like if they're the top one are very good, and they're they're kind of like timid or shy that day, so you gotta give them something different. So they they could hit that pretty good, or if they're not hampering the flow in the fluke, you just gotta keep. So a lot of people want to talk about the, uh, the rattle trap for lipless crankbait. It's really good too. Lipless crankbait. It's really good too. And people don't fish it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, hooked up. That's another. That's another bright. Not bright. Not only bright, but it's a good comment. Is uh, you know, why you sing hooks so you don't get hooked when a twenty-pound bluefish is flopping around your boat. Exactly. So it's all about danger. <laughs> Been killing the bull reds at night with purple rapalas. Yeah, see, that's a local, that's probably a local secret. <laughs> the, the color purple is weird. Purple, if you look at this purple, purple is basically just black. The, the color purple is weird. Purple, if you look at this purple, purple is basically just black. In some colors, purple, or well, color spectrums, purple is actually like a glow in the dark color. Like it glows in the dark a little bit. So if you're night fishing, purple might be a good idea. But if you're talking about the idea of glow in the darks, then why haven't people used uh, glow in the dark paint? You know what I mean? You know when you was a little kid, you growing up, you always had all these glow in the dark toys? Well, they have glow in the dark paint. I don't know why they're not painting Rapala's. Or everything else, who who for all the guys that are fishing at night, right? Specifically for those guys, all those guys. Why are they not painting lures glow in the dark colors? And I don't I don't mean like paint the whole thing. Just give it like accents or or just the butt or or just the belly or or you know the the fish have lateral lines. Or just do the lateral line, you know, like just paint that. I don't know. People should though. I mean, they should, but I guess there's not enough. Uh, <clears throat> Not enough attention on it, but yeah. So for the guys that are here tonight, uh, we're gonna give you guys a little insight into what we've been talking about. So if you've been looking at all the baits I've just flashed, right? All the baits that I just flashed on the screen, um, they're all pencil poppers, right? Every single one of them pencil poppers. Like uh, let, me, let me run you through them again. Shower blows from Evergreen, very expensive. Evergreen shower blows. And it literally says shower blows, right? It's weird. I don't know what I don't know how the JD Japanese people come up with that. But then we got oh yeah, another thing about treble hooks is this is why. This is the reason why another reason why you don't want treble hooks. Can't get them to come off. Oh. Ah, come on. All right, and then this one is a. I'm a little stick, little stick. I'm a little stick, and then we have a Berkey. They're both Berkeley King. Much more just basic design. This actually looks like a Lucky Crab Drumfish. I don't have a Lucky Crab, but I think a lot of people know what Lucky Crab Drumfish is. Because it's got kind of that Lucky Crab Drumfish mouth. Kind of that spit mouth, you know. So that's what that is. Uh, and another, another Ima. Ima Little Stick. So this one's been pretty, it's been pretty, pretty good, you know, pretty good for us. But, but the problem with this, these lures is they're not weighted. So... Like I mentioned before, there's there's certain times of the year where you want a weighted lure and you don't want a weighted lure. So when they're biting that aggressive bite, where it's like like that, where you actually want half your bait underwater so it can throw water very good, a regular lure can't do that or can't do that as good. So you want some weight on the butt end 
So it sits in the water, so every time you twitch it with your surf rod, it literally like swipes water, and that's what you want. Sometimes that's the bite. It's an aggressive bite, but there are moments in time when you want that. And when you have a, a really, really weighted, weighted down lure, the other benefit is you can cast it real far. You know, like this one. This one will probably get you 50, 60, 70 yards, but it's not going to get you 100. I guarantee you that. But if you take the same one, take the same one, same guy. Well, this one, this one's damaged. Let me take this out. Take the same bait. You weight it down so it's like twice, three times. This is how you're going to get your 125 yards on your surf rod. That's what's going to do it. Okay? So what we're going to be... If you guys were here last week, we talked about top water. So this by far is our favorite past three years, right? It's, I'm a little stick, but we still have to modify it. It's like a $9 lure, but after you modify it, it's about, you know, 15, 16, 20 bucks. Depending what kind of hooks you put on it, depending on what kind of split, it depends what kind of you put in it, right? So you're looking, you know, you buy it, I think it's like nine bucks after taxes. But after you do all the work, it's about a $15 lure, you know? And then if you throw it and you hit a wall, which is you know, 15 bucks. So for the channel, uh, a lot of people have been asking, you know, why don't you build these lures and just sell them to us? <laughs> And we're always like, well, I don't know if you guys are going to build them. If we build them, would you guys buy them? That's the thing, too. So we've been kind of saying that for the past two or three years. And we finally made a decision to try it. Okay, so what I've ordered is basically a blank. A blank of my favorite top one, which is the Evergreen Shower Blows, right? So you got this guy. This is the Evergreen Shower Blues. This is like a $25 more after taxes, right? Depending on where you buy it, of course. But these are always out of stock. It's very, very popular in the bass fishing world. But in our areas, in Oklahoma, Arkansas, this is the perfect size. Texas, this is the perfect size. It'll catch everything from 14 inches all the way to 30 plus. Perfect size. Because majority of our bait is, is not gizzard shads. The majority of our baits is thread fins. And gizzards. Like this is the perfect gizzard shad, gizzard shad size too. It's a five and a quarter inch bait, right? Five and a quarter, but it's got a bigger butt end over here than the front end, and it's got uh, a pretty. This is a nice cup now. It looks pretty cool, and it's really good at thrashing water. That's what this bait is really good at. So take that, buy a blank, buy the blank, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna load them up for you guys. Uh, we mentioned that last time. We're going to load them up to what we like so that when you guys buy them, you guys know this is tuned. Like, this is a performance version of what's available at the store. So you'll have a tuned version. For like I said, you know, chrome and meat. The first batch we're probably, probably going to drop is just chrome. We're just white. White, and you might not even offer hooks. And if you want hooks, we'll probably add some hooks. Feed, but it'll be an ounce and a half to three ounces, and it'll be that long range. It'll be that short. It won't be the the, the short range. Range you get short. You can buy it in the stores. They just go buy it in the stores. We're not gonna we're not gonna compete with that that world or, or those lures because I feel like it's not worth it. Just. We're kind of in the performance game. You know, that's part of why you guys are here too. We're giving away a lot of good information. Performance kind of base information. All right, you're talking swim bait cadence. Swim bait cadence. Uh, at the dams, there's a there's a little bit on the cadence, but with a swim bait, for the most part, you're just reeling it or you're just hopping it, like hop, hop, or hop, hop. Hot. If it gets much more complicated than that, then I feel like there's another bait you can throw in there that'll kick that'll catch it easier. Because really a swim bait is just to be thrown out there and real straight in. Like all the action from the swim bait is you know, so 
don't get it too too complicated. Go like, no, but don't get me wrong. If you're at the dam and all the fish are at the dam and they're nowhere else, and you have to figure out the bite, then you have. But for the most part, there's fish. You have, in your mind, you have to start thinking more than one spot. If these damn fish are too smart, you need to just move to a different spot and you'll catch them again. And you won't have to work as hard. And that's that's the reason why the the the, the loaded the loaded top water may drop in a couple uh, just because of that. Because if you're at dams and they're not close to the bank, and they are so far out there, and you have to make the cast. That's when the loaded plug is going to come. Kind of the same situation. You have to figure out what they want or how to even get to them. And that's a really, really, like, kind of small margin of uh, opportunity, you can say. But if, if that's the only way you could catch them, then that's the only way you can catch them. You have to do it that way. So for the most part, like I said, uh, swim baits, a lot of times, you know, swim bait, if you, if you can swim it ideally, you know, a foot above the ground, that's that's the deadliest there'll ever be, and a lot sometimes if you if you, if you, if you twitch it, it'll kind of simulate like a little bait, and it'll cause a reaction strike, and that's probably what you'll get. So you'll you'll know it's a reaction strike or not too, because so if you throw it out there and you're just slow wind it, and you don't get bit, if you throw it out there and you're slow wind it and you twitch it, and a second or two after you twitch it, if you get a bite, then that's a reaction bite. That's not a hunger bite. So you kind of have to think about that too, whether the fish you're catching, if they're hungry, or whether that's a reaction bite. How, how has the white bass bite, Texas, has come and go? We, we haven't gotten a white bass bite yet. Well, well, I say that, but we haven't checked on our white bass yet. But usually they're not here yet. They're usually not there yet. They are staging or starting to stage last time we went out, which was two and a half weeks ago. They were starting to stage. They are at the mouth of the creeks, but they're still all deep. They're out in 20 foot of water. But they're there. They're, they're getting ready. They're waiting for that, you know, third rainstorm. And they will be all the way up the creek. I uh, picked up a bunch of bomber A, bunch of bomber A salts and jointed bombers lures at Ollie's about half price. Yeah, Ollie's for the guys that don't know, Ollie's is basically the uh, uh, what do we call them? the Marshalls or the Coles? Well, I don't know Coles, yeah, they uh, they sell all the baits that other companies can't sell, or all the discount baits. Sometimes you get pretty good deals. Ain't gonna lie. Sometimes you get some pretty killer deals on there. If you build modded bobbers, I will buy. Yeah, we thought about it. We thought about it. Modded bobbers, which is coming too. We don't know what we're gonna do yet, but we'll 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 let you guys know since we do. Yep, the Cordell six inch loaded at two and a half ounces is the best, better casting than anything I've ever tried. Well, Mr. Fang Lee, you need to talk to my brother 47 because he's tried that too and he says this this little Ima way better than that. It gets you another 20 yards. 20 yards. Of course that's what his setup, but he's he swears by it. And we can't we can't outcast him, so you know if you can't beat him, you gotta join him. So that's basically what we do. Um so I'm a, like I said, we, we've done basically, well, speaking of Cordell, there it is. Yep. I think that's six and a half. Six and a half or seven. Right there. But yeah. Yep. Pretty good, pretty good. But yeah, when it comes to hooks, man, trouble hooks are tricky. Just because right when you think a, a bait, a, a hook is big enough for a striper, they'll still mangle it up. Because you're on braid, there's no give, and, you know, it's, it's something that has to give. So on the stripers, man, they, they take a big old... Well, this is a 2X strong. I think this is, yeah, 2X strong. 
double gossip with EWG, and they they make they make it look funny. You've had strippers bend these things out. They bent that out. You know, they no problem. Because these are like these are still the stock hooks. They're, they're not that good. I'll be honest. Stock hooks. They've disappointed quite quite a bit. Stock hooks. All righty. Uh, might start. I got some. I got some things I want to do, uh, including throwing a big A rig out there. Well, it's not an A rig. It's a quad. It's a quad rig, basically. If you guys watched the last episode, you guys saw it. But I want to throw a quad rig with like twenty baits on it, and I want to catch five to ten white bass at a time. That's really what I want to do. I think it's a pretty cool, pretty cool go for the for the year because you know you have goals for, that you need to set for yourself. It's a pretty cool go. For the for the year, because you know you have goals for that you need to set for yourself so you can uh, you know, go chase them. But yeah, There's a lot of good things happening, man. I can't miss because the last couple years I've been fishing bass too much, and I missed the striper top water bite. I was kind of mad, you know. I was kind of mad, uh, but at the same time, I won a bass tournament throwing top water. So top water is kind of our wheelhouse. Like the, the channel, we know we know top water is pretty good. We know it pretty good. Put it that we know pretty good. That's our thing. Yep. Uh, that's that's the that's the plan. So anyways, I didn't get eyeballs on it. <laughs> I might might not offer it with balls. So that's one thing that uh, I think the I think it kind of tricks people uh, more than anything is the eyeballs. Because when the, the bait is doing this, and you're a bass looking at it, you know, you're a striper looking at it, you, you, you can't see the eyeballs. <laughs> but uh, well, people really, really like eyeballs, like really nice eyeballs on their lures, and I don't know why. What time is good to go fishing for? What time is good to go fishing for striper? And yeah, that's actually a pretty good, pretty good newbie question. What time is good to go fishing for striper? And regardless of time of year, right? If you if you can go anytime you want, it's it's always it's always best an hour before sunrise and an hour after sunrise. <laughs> so, let me say, an hour before sunrise and an hour after sunrise. That's uh, that's probably the best time to catch a striker. Best time. Um, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't matter if it's winter time, summer time, uh, spring or fall. They just seem they seem to do that. The only exception is if they're on top water. If they're if they're if they're chasing bait on top water, they might do it. Two, three, four o'clock in the afternoon, or nine, ten, eleven, and then one night. Once the night hits, they just disappear. So that's that's why. Not to go. If you had to pick not to go, I would probably have to say, don't. See, I say that, but the thing, the thing is, like, it's never. The reality is, it's never a bad time to go strike for fishing. It's never a bad time. It's never a bad time to. The tricky part is just to because I was gonna tell you don't go between nine and two, right? Actually, the, but that's when my favorite time is to go fishing between nine and two. Actually, the favorite time to go seven and if you're on a boat May and May and June, you want to throw a giant spoon. On stripers, which is probably the best bite you'll ever get. Uh, Eleven and two. When you when you're on the front of the boat, so you, I only describe to you the best time to go fishing, right? My best time is probably not everybody's best time. I just want to put that out there, right? So my best time is uh, early June. Don't even worry about it, right? We're not 
this bite doesn't get good until so in the morning all the fish scatter right they go to the shallows they attack everything and they and in the midday they come back they all come back and they regroup right they regroup on humps channel swings and points it is deep 25 30 foot deep right but they all come back wherever they went to they all come back like 11 to 2 they all come back they're right there they're not active it's hard for you to catch them on a swim bait it's hard if you everything is because they're not hungry they're not hungry. that's when you get gooder or tech you get better as a fisherman take take a big spoon and you guys will see me talk about this all the time take a take a spoon that people are afraid of basically that's how big it could get and you throw it down there and you you basically this spoon is heavy it's like a three ounce four ounce spoon it feels like and it does all types of darting action as it's falling and it falls right into the school of fish and it hits them your goal is to hit fish you just knocking them on the head basically is what's going to happen and when you smack one on the head that one taking them on the head basically and when you smack one on the head that one takes off you want to fire so that's the crazy thing about fish is when one takes off they think that one's taken off to catch bait or something, and it fires up the school, and then now anything that's moving inside the school is going to get smoked. And guess what's in the school? It's a giant spoon. And they bite the spoon. They bite the spoon. It's a crazy big spoon, but they bite Everybody bites it. <laughs> It's my favorite time to fish, bro. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it's a little tricky to do because if no one's ever shown you how to do it, it it's very daunting because big spoons for stripers is not a common thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, the other thing is uh you gotta you gotta think about the information you're getting, right? So a lot of people, a lot of people like I we I think the them is dead. Okay, okay, it's dead. Leave it alone, right? Leave it alone because you read the report. The report says dead, right? Or it's good, then, then it's dead, right? Give it one or two weeks, leak off and try. Leak off and try, man. I'm telling you. Some good days, don't get me wrong. But you're going to get one of those good days where, like, like we always say, if we ain't got no video proof, it didn't happen. And those are the days where you go out there and you might be like, the only person or you and your buddies the only two and there's like a thousand and there's like a thousand fish you just have a ball man you just keep you can non-stop four or five hours non-stop four to five hours like as fast as you can throw this plug out there hits the water However, your line's not even tight yet like those days those days they have they happen. They happen very often too. But if you're if you're listening to reports, then you'll never you'll never experience it. Because by the time the report gets to you, half those fish are already gone. You know, half of them are already gone. And that's kind of what it is. Half of them are already gone. And when they're half gone, the dumb ones are gone, right? The smart ones are a lot harder to catch. All right, let's see. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, we we love throwing the uh, these are these are pencil poppers, but they're also called walking type, a walking type bait. And then you also have these guys. They're just a traditional like, traditional poppers. Like from what I've understood, well, the reason why I even have this is this is for white bass. The poppers, the white bass seem to hit the white bass. The white bass seem to hit the poppers a lot better than the, than these, the walking style baits. Walking style baits, they'll hit it, but they have a hard time like getting the hooks. With a popper, it doesn't move a lot. It just goes pop, 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 and that's it. And it just comes in. The line, 20 pound, 30 pounds, that's pretty good. If you want a lot of strength, then 30. If you want maximum casting, 20. Uh, we throw the Power Pro Max Quattro, which is probably the most expensive line. That you can get in the stores, uh, but been pretty happy with it. The twenty is it gives you so much range, but you just can't let it touch anything. Like if you let it touch rocks, it's just done. 
Ills. Yeah. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. I, did, I never thought that people would uh, be willing to chime in and listen to the chubby guy talk for an hour. <laughs> so if you guys are if you guys are in, in here, you know we really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate all the feedback. Appreciate just uh, just hanging out with the people in the fishing community. It's a small and you know you go to a party and you ask how many people fish and one out of a hundred people actually fish or know what they're talking about. So it's a it's a big thing for us, you know, to kind of do this every Tuesday, Thursday specific questions you guys want to you know ask and we might turn it into a topic. And once we turn it into a topic, the whole world can know about it. So that's the other thing too. We feel like we have a lot of we feel like we have a lot of knowledge and we don't have a way to really like put it out there. You know, and creating creating videos take a lot of time. Where if you just do the live, everybody who wants those answers can get them real quick. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm about to cut tonight short, man. Uh, like I said, I didn't really bring anything to, to really talk about, so we're just going off of questions. So if you guys have any questions, I know there's still like seven guys on here. At one time, I had like 28, 29, but... Uh, Questions, concerns, let me know, man. Anything goes. It's the last, you know, 15 minutes, so anything goes. Doesn't have to be stripers. Be any, be crappies. So this is the ugliest crappie jig ever, right? <laughs> this <is> my favorite. <laughs> I know I'm not, the, I'm not the only one that does that thing like that. The ugly jigs work too, okay? Rooster tails and white bass is like peanut butter and jelly. They go together. Uh, I think it's called Vibrax. Vibrax? 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 Look into that one. Because on a rooster tail, the, the, the blade spins real smooth. The Vibrax, it, it spins and then it hits something and then it causes the whole thing to do this. So it's more of vibrating. It hits Vibrax. It looks just like a rooster tail, but it, it gives you a lot more thump. Traditional like rooster tail. But rooster tails work, man. It grew up with rooster tails catching trout. What do you think of the Z Man? Better than the regular. Mm, I do use them. Um, 